Hey guys, what is up? It is SSD Middleman here with Guides for Assault, and today we're going to be checking out all of the Fist and Claw weapons in Dark Souls 2. As always, click on the screen if you want to skip to a certain one. And let's get started with the Chaostis. I don't know how to pronounce these things, but I'm just going to say it with a weird accent. The Chaostis can be obtained by buying them from Merchant Hag Malentia for 1,000 souls each. She sells an infinite amount, so buy two and power stands them if you'd like to. These things are a really cool weapon. At plus 10, you'll be doing 90 base damage which sounds horrible, but they have an A scaling in both strength and dexterity. So the higher your strength and dexterity, the more damage you're going to be doing with these guys. So I recommend having at least 40 strength and dexterity for maximum effect. The beauty of the dual wielded castus is that you can do a crap ton of burst damage with these things. Uh, the DPS is actually insane, and you can even parry firebombs with them. Yes, you heard me right, you can parry firebombs. Weird, but an interesting fact. Uh, you can also uh, power stance with a single one in your left hand and nothing in your right, so you could have one bare fist and one cast this in the other hand, which is great. You can put the vanquisher seal on and get the extra damage from your unequipped hand, and then also have the cast this in the other hand. For the damage from that, just an interesting idea for a build there. And yeah, let's move on to the claws. You can buy these from Laddersmith Gilligan for 1,500 souls. He also sells an indefinite amount of them, so you can buy them to dual wield. These things will have the bleed effect on them automatically. At plus 10, you'll be doing 155 base damage with an E scaling in strength and an A scaling in dexterity with 120 bleed damage to boot. These things are pretty awesome, especially if you infuse them with poison. Because, so the base damage will go to 139 from 155 when you infuse it with poison you will get 120 poison damage and your bleed damage will only go down to 108 still inflicting heavy bleed especially if you wear the crest of blood ring because it'll boost your uh, bleed damage back up higher than 120 and the crest of the rat ring which will increase your poison damage so if you're dual wielding these guys in pvp and you get some quick attacks off your enemy will be bleeding and be poisoned there's no way they can make it out of that fight if you can land a couple attacks pretty quickly another thing to note you cannot use any kind of resin uh to buff these weapons but you can buff it with magic anyways moving on to the malformed claws the first of two weapons that are a pain in the butt to get from this set to get the malformed claws you will have to fight the suspicious shadow enemies that you can find while fighting the Flexile Sentry in New Game Plus. Now in Power, or <laughs> in Scholar of the First Sin, these weapons are a little bit easier to get as you can find these enemies around No Man's Wharf and not just in the boss area, but the drop rate is abysmally low for a weapon that I feel is not super amazing. At plus 10, you will have 130 base damage with a B scaling in strength and a D scaling in dexterity. Not too terrible. You can also infuse them with poison for 140 poison damage or bleed for 140 bleed damage. Uh, these weapons are okay, in my opinion. Um, not worth the farming for them, but if they were found in some other way, I think they'd be pretty cool for like a cosplay or something like that. But that's really all I have to say about these weapons. Now moving on to the Mannequin Claws, the second of the pain in the butt weapons that you can farm in this set. You will get them from three particular mannequins in Earthen Peak. Go from the first bonfire back through the covetous demon door. You may not have seen this little uh, hidden place before, but now that you're heading back, you'll probably be able to see it. Jump down to this little alcove here, and inside you will find the three mannequins you can kill to get a drop of the mannequin claws. These are a pretty rare drop. It took me a while to get them, but once you get them, it is so worth it because this weapon looks so cool. I can only imagine how awesome it looks to dual wield these things and go at somebody in PvP, but I do not have the patience to farm these for a second time. At plus 10, you will have 150 base damage with a C scaling in both strength and dexterity. Infusing these weapons with bleed or poison will actually increase the base damage to 167, but it will reduce the scaling to D for dexterity. Uh, in Scholar of the First Sin, these weapons have a bleed effect automatically on them, but in Dark Souls 2, you will not have that luxury, unfortunately. There's not really much else to say about these weapons. I think they look cool. They're probably one of the coolest looking weapons in the set, if not the coolest. And yeah, let's move on to the work hook. Probably the most famous of the uh, Fist and Claw set. You can get this from a mimic in Earthen Peak. Uh, it's in a room filled with poison urns right outside the third bonfire. This weapon is super cool looking because you look like one of those crazy old ghost stories, you know, like the guy with the hook for the hand and you can hunt people down with this. At plus 10, you'll be doing 40 base damage with a C scaling in strength, and you must be thinking, holy crap, that's the worst thing I've ever heard of in my life. 
but this weapon does have 100 bleed damage, and if you infuse it with mundane and your lowest stat is around 20, you'll be actually doing decent damage with this weapon. As you'll see in the video, I actually can take things on and fight them with the work hook. Uh, if you don't infuse it with mundane, it's not going to be good. In the slightest, it's going to be the worst weapon you've ever used in your life, besides maybe the ladle. Uh, and when you have it equipped, it will actually increase your dexterity by 5 and reduce your adaptability by 3. So, a tiny boost to your damage, uh, not significant in the slightest. But this weapon is a lot of fun to use. I really, really like using this weapon. Yep, that's all I have to say. Now moving on to the last of the Fist and Claw weapons. The Bone Fist you can find in the Crown of the Ivory King DLC. Uh, follow where I go after the door or after the place where you fight enemies with a bunch of boxes go through the door and there will be a hidden path which you can go through in the snow you actually have to beat the king's pet and talk to the princess for this path to be revealed then you're going to want to use a flame butterfly light all four of these guys up and then head inside take a left through the hidden door up at the top will be the bone fist now this thing is super unique in the fact that there is no weapon like it when you equip this weapon you will have a super cool unique Move set, and I'm going to keep using the word super and unique because this weapon is incredible. You probably face somebody with this in PvP. You turn into this kung fu ninja fighter who can power stance the weapon, use your heavy attack to shoot a projectile. You can do these cool combos. Uh, you can actually power stance with any fist weapons or barehanded, just like the Castus. And if you have your weapon, uh, what's it called? If you are barehanded in your other hand, the Vanquisher Seal will also help with this, and it won't even deplete the durability of the Vanquisher Seal ring if you're using the Power Stance Strong Attack where you shoot the projectile. Uh, plus 5, this weapon's going to have 20 base damage, which again might seem horrible, but there is an S scaling in strength and an A scaling in dexterity. Much like the Castus, it will boost your damage up a bunch. At 40 strength, 40 dexterity, your rating will be 203 without even having any enchantments, so... Yeah, this weapon is just incredible. I can't speak any more about how fun it is to use. You have to go try it yourself. Uh, when you use the power stance attack, it's like using Hadouken in Street Fighter. It is just so cool, and you'll probably piss some people off that you're fighting in PvP. But in all honesty, it's pretty easy to counter this weapon, so you have to get good with it before you can take people on. Anyways, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed, please leave a like rating down below and subscribe to see some more videos in the future. Let me know what you think about all these fist and claw weapons. Let me know which one's your favorite, and let me know if you fanboy over the bone fist as much as I do. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.